video will discuss about molecular basis of cancer so before understanding the molecular basis of con uh, cancer let's understand first what is the normal cell proliferation whenever the normal cell proliferate what happens is there is a growth factor which binds to a specific receptor and after that binding there is activation of that growth factor receptor okay so if you have this is your cell there will be a growth uh, factor receptor over here there will be growth factor over here growth factor will bind to growth factor receptor and then there is transient and limited activation of growth factor receptor when this happens when this receptor is activated then several transducing signal transducing proteins which are present on the plasma membrane they get activated there are certain membranous proteins which are present over here they get activated we will understand there are many like ras is there okay so they get activated and then further uh, the signal is transmitted from the cytosol to the nucleus okay now the cell again you have growth factor growth factor receptor then a signal transducing protein this signal transducing protein will send the signal from the cytosol into the nucleus and here dna transcription will begin okay and then there there will be cell cycle so this is the normal uh, how the normal transcription takes place now what happens in case of uh, malignancy in case of neoplasia so for that there are seven essential alterations which will take place there is this uh, is the main molecular basis of your carcinoma so what are the seven alterations which can take place and within each alteration we will be discussing in detail which gene is involved so first is the self sufficiency in the growth signals okay that the cells should be self sufficient to uh, get growth signals then second is insensitivity to growth inhibitory signals third is evasion of apoptosis that is evasion of cell death then limitless replicative potential of that cell sustained angiogenesis it should a tumor should get blood supply that is sustained angiogenesis should be there the tumor should have ability to invade and metastasize especially for mal your malignancies okay especially for malignant tumors then defects in dna repair should be there if there is uh, any dna repair the uh, cell should not be able to uh, repair it and therefore it will go into neoplastic cell and lastly all after all this the cell which is formed which is a neoplastic cell should evade from the immune system also so this is the seven ways by which collectively these ways uh, a tumor can be formed so all these ways is, uh, lead to formation of neoplasia so we will discuss each one in detail so first is self sufficiency in the growth signals that is that the cells should be uh, self sufficient to grow this uh, is a concept of here comes is oncogenes so what is oncogene in a normal cell there are some genes which are known as proto oncogene they lead to growth and proliferation okay but these are transiently active they are not always active whenever there is growth and proliferation which will take place then only these gene will get activated what happens is when there is mutation the proto oncogenes they get converted into oncogenes and these oncogenes are later on you will understand they get always activated they get always activated and therefore uh will lead to further development of neoplasia so before understanding that let's see how our uh, cell transcripts how the cell growth takes place so each if on each step there can be a oncogene first is growth factor okay first is growth factor there uh, there can be problem in the growth factor gene only okay then second is growth factor receptor then third is your signal transducing proteins such as ras is there this is very important uh, oncogene then after that 
uh, there can be activation of the nuclear transcription and in this nuclear transcription genes can be uh, problematic and lastly there can be problematic in problems in the cell cycle so these are all the oncogenes on a various levels they will get activated and they will further lead to cell growth so first is a growth factor normally the cell requires stimulation of growth factors to undergo proliferation most of the growth factors are what uh, are secreted by one cell and they also uh, act on neighboring cell to stimulate proliferation this is a paracrine action which takes place in the normal cell okay one cell secretes uh, the growth factor and it acts on another cell and this uh, cell proliferates this is the paracrine action what happens in the case of neoplasia there is a autocrine phenomena which takes place the cancer cell they acquire the ability to synthesize their own growth factors therefore generating an autocrine loop examples of stem cells which can do that are glioblastomas this is a cns tumor uh, here it, it secretes pdgf then there is sarcomas they secrete tgf alpha these are two growth factors now second is growth factor receptor second level okay here what happens is several oncogenes can encode growth factor receptors uh, always uh, in a growth factor receptor if this is a growth factor receptor there are two sites there is one is the ligand binding site and second is the cytoplasmic tyrosine kinase dependent site okay there is a ligand binding site ligand here is growth factor and the second is the cytoplasmic tyrosine kinase uh, cytoplasmic uh, domain over here okay this side so in the normal form of these receptor what happen is whenever kinase is activated it is only transiently activated it is not always active but in case of oncogenic version of these receptor kinase will be constitutively active this will lead to continuous signals to the cell to replicate okay B without any signal also the cell will behave that the signals are coming so in uh, resulting in continuous mitogenic signals to the cell even in the absence of growth factor in the environment examples of some genes uh, of the growth factor receptor are first is the ret oncogene it is uh, dominantly pre uh, inherited in men type 2a and type 2b these are the syndromes uh, in this multiple neoplasia neoplasia can be seen then ckit ckit is mutated in gist this is another form of tumor then erbb1 in squamous cell carcinomas erbb2 is also known as her2 gene her2 gene is a very important gene seen in the breast cancer and is in and is mutated and it is a type of growth factor receptor gene now going to third level third level is the signal transducing proteins okay when the growth uh, again just revising you have your growth factor you have growth factor then growth factor receptor then the third step comes to be the signal transducing proteins signal transducing proteins play important role in signaling cascades downstream of the growth factor receptor resulting in mitogenesis example two very good examples of signal transducing uh, protein oncogenes are ras oncogene a very important receptor important signal transducing protein and second is your in cml case so what in cml uh, which oncogene is seen is bcr abl Uh, gene so what happens in uh, cml the abl gene is normally present on chromosome 9 and it gets translocated from chromosome 9 to chromosome 22 and then bcr abl chimeric gene is formed and this gene leads to constant activation of tyrosine kinase and therefore oncogenesis another very exam important example is the ras oncogene now ras oncogene uh, there are very many varieties of ras also okay so there is a h ras there is k ras and n ras depending upon these the tumors also vary so example the k ras mutation if it takes place it is seen in colon and pancreatic carcinoma h ras in the bladder tumors and n ras in the hemopoietic tumors 
what is the role uh, how does this take place the ras oncogene how does it uh, it will discuss uh, discuss its molecular method properly so normally this is growth factor then there is growth factor receptor here you can see this is the ras present ras is mostly present in inactive state and when it is present in inactive state it is binded to gdp okay when the uh, any signal comes what happens is inactive ras gets converted into active ras and gets binded to gtp okay active ras is binded to gtp then uh, when the role of active ras is over when the signal is properly transmitted then uh, what will happen this will get hydrolyzed the gtp will get hydrolyzed and again the uh, ras will enter into inactive form that is binded to gdp but what happens in the neoplasia uh, that will see there is blockage of hydrolysis of gtp the gtp as enzyme is blocked so the if the gtp as enzyme is blocked what will happen the ras will stay in active form only so in the normal cell the ras is bound to gdp and it will remain in inactive state stimulation of any growth factor will lead to conversion of gdp into gtp now this is a active ras which is bounded to gtp and this uh, 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 transmits the signal from the nucleus to uh, uh, to for the cell proliferation now in a normal cell active ras will again conver get converted into inactive ras with the help of gtp as enzyme and one more important thing to note over here is there is something known as gap protein what is gap gap is a protein which activates this enzyme gtp as enzyme it wants it to it just gives an acceleration an extra push it gives the gap protein so in tumor cells what will happen is the hydrolysis is blocked the gtp as enzyme is blocked or there is decrease in the gap proteins also so because of this the always the ras is present in active form now next level is the nuclear regulatory proteins now the signal has got transmitted up till the cytosol and gone into the nucleus in the nucleus what happens is there is nuclear transcription which will take place the dna activates the certain transcription genes so here which gene is mutated is the mic gene myc gene so uh, just see what is myc gene it is normally present on chromosome number 8 and gets gets translocated to chromosome number 14 and there is a, a translocation 8 14 present in case of burkitt lymphoma so mic oncogene it produces and increases mic protein and this is further uh, leading to increase in growth pro growth genes okay it uh, by multiple method it increases the uh, growth of the cells also similarly which already discussed in the case of cml that is chronic myelo myeloid leukemia the bcr abl mutation takes place on the 9th chromosome there is abl oncogene which is present in the 22nd chromosome there is a bcr locus, uh, locus which is present now translocation will take place the bcr abl oncogene will be formed and then the tyrosine kinase will be always active in case of Uh, this mutation this translocation and therefore the growth factor signaling pathway will get activated so these are two translocations which are very important in hematology and similar if because tyrosine kinase is constitutively active in cml tyrosine kinase inhibitor um, is used in these patients and it is of good uh, uh, response in these patients now last oncogene is the cell cycle regulators this is the last thing okay so just revising again there is a growth factor then there was a growth factor receptor then the signal transducing protein was there then the nuclear transcription factors were there and lastly this all has to go into the cell cycle so cell cycle regulators are important they are cyclin and cyclin dependent kinases the ultimate outcome of all the growth promoting uh, stimuli is the entry of the quiescent cells into the cell cycle 
the cancers may go autonomously if the cells that drive cell cycle become mutated or amplified so there are various uh, cell cycle steps there is a g1 phase there is a s phase there is a g2 phase and there is a m phase the g1 phase is known as pre synthetic growth phase then a dna synthesis phase pre mitotic phase and a mitotic phase the cells which are not in the cell cycle they are present in g0 state that is known as the qsense cells now let's see how the cell cycle goes okay so you can see it goes from the g1 phase to the s phase then g2 phase and then the m phase and this is the cell cycle which is taking place now there are two important checkpoints in the cell cycle there is a checkpoint from g1 to s phase okay and there is a checkpoint from g2 to m phase and these uh, all is regulated by certain cyclins okay over here they push the cell into the cell cycle they want the cell to replicate okay and therefore these are our oncogenes and then there are cdk inhibitors okay they inhibit these uh, genes and therefore these are mostly the tumor suppressor genes okay so this is the whole cell cycle so uh, let's see the each and every each checkpoint so the two main checkpoint are g1 to s transition this checks the dna uh, damage before replication then is the g2 to m stage this checks that the dna has been replicated and the cell can safely enter into mitosis they delay the cell cycle progression and thus provides the time for dna repair if the damage is not repairable then apoptotic pathways are activated the cell cycle is regulated by activators and inhibitors so what are the activators activators are the cyclins and the cyclin dependent kinases okay cyclin dependent kinases and the cyclins they are the activators and the inhibitors are uh, cdk inhibitor that is cyclin dependent kinase inhibitors they inhibit the cdks so in the uh, cdk inhibitors you have two uh, important family groups there is a sip family there is an ink4 family there are various varieties in the sip family p21 p27 p57 they inhibit multiple cdks then you have 16 15 18 and 19 they have selective effect on cyclin d and cyclin cdk4 so if you see over here you have uh, this is your ink4 family 16 15 18 and 19 they inhibit cyclin d1 and cdk4 other cdks they uh, act on all the cyclins and cdks so cdks they are express expressed constitutively during the cell cycle in inactive form cyclins synthesized during specific phases of the cell cycle they activate the cdks cyclin d is the first cyclin to enter the cell cycle it binds and activates cdk4 and this cdk4 further acts on rb gene now rb gene is a tumor suppressor gene so in uh, there is a rb gene which is involved in first checkpoint and there is a p53 gene which is involved in the second checkpoint these two genes are a very important tumor suppressor gene okay that we will be discussing later on these are very important tumor suppressor genes so example of uh, cell cycle regulator genes and associated cancers are very much okay there is over expression of cyclin d in cancer of breast esophagus liver amplification of cdk4 in melanomas sarcomas uh, inactivation of p16 in pancreatic carcinomas glioblastomas and sarcomas bladder carcinomas so this was all about the oncogenes do like share and subscribe to this channel if you like this type of videos thanks for watching